This is her youngest, her youngest son. Paris Matlock sits at her kitchen table, going through the few photos she has of her mom, Verlene Flanoy. What I remember most is that smile, her smile in her eyes. It's been 30 years since someone murdered Verlene, taking her life at just 28 years old. Decades later, still no answers for her daughter. It's been hard over the years, you know, not having her here. Verlene had four kids. Paris, the oldest, was eight years old when she died. Her brothers were just toddlers and babies. They, they were it. That was it. That was all I had. As they grew up, their memories faded, but their quest for answers never did. It would be nice to know for sure, you know, what happened, what went on, who did it. It was years before Paris learned her mom's case could be connected to the murders of three other women. Dolores Furness, 30 years old, Terry Iverson, 38, Danita Landry's, 34. What did these women have in common and could their violent deaths be connected? Geauga County Detective Don Seaman thinks so. And in a rare move, Detective Seaman opened up his case files to 19 investigates. He's determined to solve the case. This is from 1981. These are the original typed police reports. In 1981, someone found the first victim's body in a drainage ditch just off Clay Street near Thompson Road in Thompson Township in Geauga County. Her body was badly decomposed. She had been missing for uh, two weeks, three weeks. It took a while to identify her as Dolores Furness of East Cleveland. Investigators believed she had been strangled, but they couldn't determine a cause of death. Nearly 11 years later in 1992, the body of Verlene Flanoy of Cleveland was found on Mead Hollow Road in Hartsgrove Township, Ashtabula County. She had been missing for about a week. Uh, her cause of death was uh, believed to be strangulation. Then, two years later in 1994, another woman's body dumped again in Geauga County. Terry Iverson of Cleveland also died of strangulation. Her body was found almost in the same location as our victim in 1981, about a quarter mile apart. Five years passed, and in 1999, a farmer discovered another woman's body dumped in a remote soybean field just across the state line in Crawford County, Pennsylvania. Danita Landry's of East Cleveland had been strangled too. She died from blunt force trauma to the head. If you follow Route 6 east from Cleveland, all the bodies were located either very close to Route 6 or just a couple miles off. Detectives in the 90s believed these killings could be connected and still do today. Just due to the similarities, um, all same type of victims uh, believed to be prostitutes, black females taken from virtual the same, uh, the same neighborhood in Cleveland. Could they have been the target of a serial killer? All four of these women were last seen here in the area of East 40th Street in Cleveland between Route 20 and Woodland Ave. Black women in their 20s and 30s, most of them strangled. Their bodies dumped in rural areas off Route 6 heading east from the city. But two large gaps in the killings have investigators stumped. After 1981, 11 years went by until the next murders in 1992 and 1994. Then five years passed before the fourth and last known murder in 1999. Did the suspect possibly go to prison on an unrelated crime uh, during those times? Did he or she maybe move out of the area? Me and my mom. I think Verlene's daughter Paris is convinced her mom knew her killer. She says her mom was not a prostitute, but she does believe the cases are connected. You know, I just think they just get caught up with an individual that, um, just had a lot of hate in his heart. You know, nothing that they did or said or to someone with hate. Throughout the years, investigators followed hundreds of leads. Detective Seaman thinks someone out there can connect those gaps in time to someone they know. We are only one phone call away, and that next phone call could be the one that could help us solve this case. And Paris is still holding out hope. We just want answers. We want to know. So if they do know anything, come forward. Tell us what you know. 
showing us another picture of the A young. daughter seeks answers 30 years later. Who murdered her mom, Verlene Flanoy? I'm just, just really hoping to just really put this to rest for me and my brothers. Hopefully we can find that one piece of evidence. A detective searches two. Two of the four homicide cases happened in his county. I can't tell you how many uh, hundreds of leads were followed up on. In a rare move, Detective Don Seaman opened up his case files to 19 investigates in hopes of stirring up new leads. But this section here where the bodies were found really... He also took us to the former crime scenes in Geauga County off a rural residential road. Our victim in 1981 would have been found in this drainage area here where you could still see water to this day. Dolores Furness found badly decomposed. No cause of death could be determined. 13 years later, another body found just a quarter mile away near an oil well. Terry Iverson was strangled to death. This would have been the driveway access and her body would have been found right along the side of the road. All signs seem to point to the same suspect. Did they think they got the same location or were they just trying to put it in a similar location? Again, what was the purpose for it? Was it almost like taunting, you know, the law enforcement? Detective Seaman thinks the killer or killers must have been familiar with this area. Do you think the killer also wanted their bodies to be found? Driving by, you would be able to see her. So it, it, it would not appear that they tried to hide, hide the bodies and did want them to be um, discovered. Could the Geauga County cold cases be connected to two other homicides nearby? Here's a timeline of all four cases. 1981, Dolores Furness, 30 years old, found dead in Geauga County. 1992, Verlene Flanoy, 28, discovered near a country road in Ashtabula County. 1994, Terry Iverson, 38, found in Geauga County. And 1999, Danita Landry's, 34, found in a soybean field just across the state line in Crawford County, Pennsylvania. Three of the women were strangled. Investigators believe Dolores Furness may have been strangled too. They were all found dead just miles off Route 6, heading east from Cleveland. Since the beginning, investigators have believed the cases could be connected. But it would appear that there was uh, some type of uh, profile that, that the killer was looking for, sure. Could these women have been a target of a serial killer? Detective Don Seaman with the Geauga County Sheriff's Office thinks it's possible. Just due to the similarities, all same type of victims, uh, believed to be prostitutes, black females taken from virtual the same, uh, the same neighborhood in Cleveland. In late 2018, detectives thought they may be able to connect the cases to a killer from right here in Northeast Ohio. Samuel Little turned out to be the most prolific serial killer in American history, confessing to 93 murders across the country. His victims strangled to death. Detective Seaman flew to Texas to meet with Samuel Little face to face. What was it like being in a room with him? Uh, it was surreal. I've worked many homicide cases, interviewed many potential suspects, but that's one that I will never forget. But Little denied he killed any of these women, and he was in prison during one of the murders. Samuel Little, from what I know of him, if he was responsible, he would admit to it. Uh, he would not admit the cases he was not responsible for, um, and he did adamantly deny having any uh, responsibility in these four specific killings. Detectives officially ruled him out as a suspect and turned their attention to other possible serial killers. Anthony Sowell, known as the Cleveland Strangler, convicted of murdering 11 women. And Samuel Legg, a former truck driver accused of several homicides in Ohio and at least one in Illinois. Both men ruled out too. So it was back to square one. Back to square one. His next try, DNA. The evidence in these four cases have been and is being reanalyzed. So looking for that one piece of DNA that is suitable for comparison, that we could start that uh, genealogy case again to look for the suspect. That's encouraging news to Verlene Flanoy's daughter, Paris Matlock. She was just eight years old when she lost her mom. We just want answers, we wanna know. Investigators never gave up on solving these cold cases, but now they have new urgency to crack them. I feel confident that we will be able to uh, locate that person. And it's just not a matter of if, but a matter of when we come knocking on their door.
The FBI at one point believed a truck driver could have been behind the killings. Detective Seaman thinks it's possible it's someone familiar with the camps in these areas. And the gaps in time between the murders could be key to solving these cases. Sarah Goldenberg, 19 News.